Okay, so today we are going to talk about why we are celebrating Christmas this year. This is the first time I have ever celebrated Christmas, and the first time that we have celebrated Christmas as a couple and as a family. So this is new to us. Back in the episodes, well, last year around episode 90, we talked about why we hadn't celebrated Christmas up until this point. And today we're going to touch on some of that. Um, We're going to talk about why we haven't celebrated Christmas in the past, why we're celebrating Christmas this year, and also some encouragement if your spouse doesn't share the same belief with you when it comes to Christmas. Maybe they are concerned about the pagan tradition and you love the positive associations with tradition that you have or something like that. There can be a lot of conflict around this holiday. So we're just going to share where we are at and... Honestly, I feel like we kind of had to explain ourselves because you guys are going to see we have a Christmas tree on Instagram. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. (laughs) So I hope you guys enjoy this episode. The Now That We're a Family Podcast. Here we are once again, Katie, a year later, but with a different perspective on Christmas. What do you know? What's funny is that I changed my perspective last year over a lot of the discussion, or my perspective started to shift, I Mm. should say, after a lot of the discussion that came from our podcast last year. Interesting. And I do think we did retain... Do you say retain the right to change our minds or to do things differently? Reserved the right or yeah, retained it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It we sense. reserve the right to do things differently in the future. And I feel like that's where we're at right now, where obviously Elisha and I don't have a ton of tradition. We have no tradition around this holiday when it comes to you and I. Yeah, our own family. That's a good point. Yeah, so we don't know if this is going to be something that is a long-term thing or maybe it's a special time for us this year and we make some good memories and then we're like, you know what, this just got too hectic or too materialistic or, you know, it didn't serve the purpose that our hearts wanted. Yeah. I I think that I do remember shortly after doing last year's episode, explaining why we were not celebrating Christmas. We, it, it led to some questions that made us dive deeper into some of the research that we had, I think, taken for granted some of the, um, I don't know, some of the things that we had heard, maybe we had taken them for granted and we decided to do our own research and, um, Again, I don't think it was conclusive one way or the other, but I think we definitely came out of that research a lot more like, this is really gray in a lot of this. Um, wouldn't you say? Yeah, for sure. I mean, sure. at least that, this time last year, that's what happened. For sure. So backing up a little bit, if you guys aren't real familiar and it's shocking you that like, what? Some Christians like who love the Lord don't want to celebrate Christ's birth. And hmm. that's really shocking. There's actually a a pretty, well, I think it's large because I know a lot of them. Um, People who obviously don't want anything to do with the works of darkness and with paganism. And during the time of the winter solstice, there's a lot of pagan rituals that go on during that time. Obviously, this is the same time that Christmas is going on. And because of that, some Christians opt to not celebrate Christmas because they don't believe it's actually glorifying God. It's just like a twisted glorification of the devil. Yeah. And it's not just because they're going on simultaneously. I think the core convictions is that there's a lot of adopted in the tradition and in the, um, decorations and in a lot of the ways we celebrate Christmas also were ways that pagans celebrated Christmas. They're pagan rituals. Yeah. And so we're going to touch on a little bit of that. Um, But that's really how I grew up. I grew up in a home that I don't know. This has actually, I feel kind of bad, I guess. Like, I don't know if anyone in my lineage has ever celebrated Christmas. Wow. Like my, as far as like my dad and my mom celebrated Christmas with her family, but like my dad didn't, my grandpa definitely didn't, my great grandpa didn't. As far up as I know, no one has celebrated this holiday. I think that's why we were so confident and comfortable not celebrating Christmas is because um, of the admiration and the respect that we had for the people in your family. Um, Not we didn't want to just honor them for their traditions. We just respected them as people. Mm -hmm. We, I mean, and still do to this day. They're like the people that we respect most in this world. And and same goes for me. It wasn't hard for me to not celebrate Christmas when Katie got married. Cause that was, more, it wasn't like a deal breaker, but it was something that you certainly preferred um, when we were, when we were dating, when we got married, I think. I mean, I, I would say that was a strong preference hmm. as in, I said, 
I will not celebrate Christmas. Wow, so, so you I was going to be doing it on my own. Yeah, so you had to agree before we got married to not ever make me celebrate Christmas. And that was easy for me. One, I was very familiar with not celebrating Christmas because we had been back and forth like my entire childhood. There was like a four-year stretch, I think from the time I was like eight until 12 or maybe seven to 11 ages in, for my age, years old, um, that... Uh, we did not celebrate Christmas for a lot of the same convictions. My dad had a lot of the same convictions um, that that your father and your family had. He had read some books and heard some different perspectives on the roots of Christianity. Um, yeah, and kind of the origins of it. And, it. and it really weighed heavy on his conscience. And so he, he listened to his conscience and we didn't celebrate it as a family. Um, and then even after that, once we started, and my dad felt a lot more liberty in that area, it's not like we fully embraced it. We were kind of just like these, like, sure, like what we can celebrate it. It's take it or leave it. And so by the time I got married to you, I was one, not surprised with a strong conviction to not celebrate Christmas. And I think I respected it because the only people that I had known that had a hard opinion on that were very respectable Christians. Yeah. They truly loved the Lord, wanted to honor him in this way. Yeah. They weren't just going along with culture. Yeah. It requires you to go, if you're not celebrating Christmas, you're definitely going upstream. Mm -hmm. And so as a result of that, I often respected a lot of the other ways that these believers were going upstream against yes, culture. That's right. Yeah. It was easy to respect, respect that. And so again, it wasn't this huge sacrifice for me to not celebrate Christmas when we got married. Um, because it wasn't a surprise. I had a ton of respect and admiration for the convictions of the people that didn't, did not celebrate Christmas. And it just wasn't that important to me either. Just like, I was kind of like apathetic towards, towards Christmas. Um, and so you thought it was going to be a big deal. And I was all stoked. I was like, really? Like, that's not even a big deal to me. Sweet. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> combined with you sold Christmas trees for years, you were really burnt out. Yeah, I think that industry. did that did kind of like, yeah, bitter my taste a little bit towards and Christmas. And Elisha is not necessarily the most festive holiday person. Yeah, I'm starting to become that way, he though. He is, though. And it's actually been really, really fun for our family. But I do want to touch on that. I think it's really important that you honor your spouse's conviction because we don't ever want to make our spouses do something that goes against their conscience. Yes. And so I was so grateful Elisha honored me in that because I was, I never felt any guilt and I knew that I would feel guilt celebrating Christmas because of how I was brought up and I hadn't done my own research, but I knew that I couldn't have a tree in my own home, for instance, yeah. without feeling guilty. And I think this is important in really any area of life when it comes to our marriages. First Corinthians 8.13 says, Therefore, if food makes my brother to stumble, I will not eat meat, lest I make my brother stumble. Yeah. Wherefore, if meat maketh my brother to offend. Oh, you know what? That's the ESV, and then there's the KJV. I'm going to read the verse in both, in both translations here. But it's basically like we don't want to offend our our spouses or ever encourage them to go against something that their conscience is like convicted in Yeah. when it comes to media, you know, if one wow. spouse is more sensitive to things in media, we don't want to encourage them to watch something that they're uncomfortable with. Even if that doesn't prick our conscience, mm. you know, maybe it, maybe it should, <laughs> or, you know, with, with, how we're raising our kids mm -hmm. and what we want to allow or whatever. Yeah. The type of language we use in the home, you know, what's, mm -hmm. what's our vernacular, um, our humor, the music we listen to. I mean, I feel like there's a lot of directions you could go with yeah, that. There's a lot of gray area in there. <clears throat> and so I just think it's healthy to be sensitive to the spouse that is, has a strong conviction. Yeah, exactly. Because that verse, you know, the, the first Corinthians chapter eight, when it's talking about meat offered, to idols, which is pretty, pretty crazy. Um, Paul, I think says, and I'm paraphrasing, but he's saying like, we know that what you eat or what you don't eat doesn't make you holy or not holy, but if it offends you, don't eat it. And if it doesn't offend you, have total free, just eat it and kind of mind your own business, but don't eat it around people who it does offend, like be sensitive to their conscience. And again, I want to be sensitive in talking to using that reference towards Christmas because that's the funny thing about convictions that, is that when it is a conviction to you, it is black and white and it, and it mm -hmm. is so clear. Um, but with where we currently stand, we, I just simply, when I, when I read the articles people have sent me 
the snippets from books, you know, that people reference. I, I just don't have a conscience issue celebrating Christmas. I don't right now. Is that it's a giveaway? So funny. You're like, the way you're saying this is like someone's forcing it out of you with a cattle prod. Well, no. Well, <laughs> I think that I, I thought I was expecting to have more of a conviction on it, I guess. Because I went into this research and enjoying not celebrating Christmas. Kind of like I liked not celebrating Christmas. It, it made our life simpler and easier. And I don't feel compelled to celebrate Christmas now, but I do feel, and I, these are in my notes, that there was three big things that were keeping me from celebrating Christmas. The, big in one, the biggest one being the pagan association with the origin of Christmas. You don't want me to get to that yet? No. Can we talk about that for a little bit though, before we go through all three of your points? Yeah, I think we can just talk about my first, that was my first point. Oh, okay, and that cool. was the big one, because the other ones are pretty dang subjective. Like, you know, paganism is objectively bad if you're <laughs> yeah, a Christian. It's evil. Yeah, yeah. so if you're, if you're practicing paganism, then I think any brother in the Lord or sister in the Lord would say, hey, you need to stop partaking in that. And so when I thought that by partaking in Christmas, I was going to be practicing pagan festivities or pagan practices... And that was, I was like, well, that's enough. I, I kind of liked people telling me that because I was like, hey, easy enough. I like, you don't have to convince me to not celebrate Christmas. Um, and so I won't do it. And then again, through the research, I was like, I don't, again, I have total respect for people that feel compelled, but I don't think that the evidence and where you take it is, is very conclusive to make a hard stance on it. Yeah. So basically what made us change our minds, there were a couple things. One of the first things actually was I decorated our house. I got some red pillows last year and I strung up like some evergreen bows, bows, however you say that on our like stair rails. And I got a message on Instagram that was this real long message saying how pagan I was for putting red decorating with the color red because they're like don't you know that that has pagan roots Hmm. and you're you know you're contributing to you know paganism Mm -hmm. and so I was like okay that just kind of made me stop and think like so the color red in winter is pagan okay I thought it was just the tree but now we have the color red and then I got more messages after we published this episode because I had wreaths in our home as well and people let me know that Romans wore these wreaths of holly to honor Saturnalia yeah um during their celebration of winter solstice in December from the 17th to the 25th so now I'm going okay so the wreaths in the red and then Elisha and I I was like, let's sit down and watch some documentaries because I've been trying to convince him for five years that Christmas is truly pagan and he shouldn't feel apathetic (laughs) towards the subject. Yeah. So we sat down and watched these documentaries and we learned, okay, mistletoe is the most sacred plant to the Druids. Um, And actually, I looked this up and there's this list of these rituals, these winter rituals that pagans or things that pagans would use during the winter solstice. And I wrote down a few of them. It's holly, mistletoe, ivy, wreaths, gift giving, green leaves and red berries, group singing, winter, the Yule log and candles. And the list goes on and it's like, it's kind of hard to win. Yeah. You're like, that's all the stuff. That's all the stuff. And this is what all the documentaries were saying. They were linking everything that wasn't even Christmas related, but more winter related and showing how the pagans would use it in their holidays. And I started to take a step back and go, okay, green and red are the only colors that are around in winter. Like it's white, green, and red. In some parts of the world. Well, yeah. yeah, Like where we live. Yeah. That's literally all there is. You're not going to find pink or purple flowers. So if you're trying to decorate your house in winter, you're going to use candles and green and red. Yeah. And so that's kind of where, for me, I guess the conviction that I thought I had started to kind of slip and feel like, okay, I do believe that pagans used all these things to worship their gods, but God created these things. They they are, um, what do you say, amoral. Hmm. And how we choose to use them, if we can use them to glorify God. Mm -hmm. The pagans can't claim everything about winter and say that that's all theirs to celebrate with. But we can't glorify or honor our God with the same things. Like the true God who created it. Which 
obviously, I think the Christmas tree verse came up as a part of this, did it not? Yeah, so after addressing everything else with the whole, you know, pagan roots to everything in winter, I was like, okay, let's go back to the Christmas tree and see what verse people bring up when they say that the Christmas tree is pagan, because now I'm kind of starting to question how pagans get to claim everything about winter. And so this passage, I encourage you to read the whole passage. It's in Jeremiah 10. And it says, so we'll start with verse two. Thus saith the Lord, learn not the way of the heathen and be not dismayed at the signs of heaven for the heathen are dismayed at them. For the customs of the people are vain. For one cutteth a tree out of the forest, the work of the hands of the workmen with the ax. They deck it with silver and with gold. They fasten it with nails and with hammers that it move not. Sounding like a Christmas tree. <laughs> they are upright as the palm tree, but speak not. They must needs be born because they cannot go. Be not afraid of them, for they cannot do evil, neither also is it in them to do good. For as much as there is none like unto thee, O Lord, thou art great, and thy name is great in might. It's talking about idols. Hmm. Don't you think? Yeah, taken from trees, yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's what idols were. It's like you're cutting down this tree, you're working with it with your hands to make it gold and silver mm -hmm. and you're worshiping it and they're saying don't be afraid because they don't speak they need to be carried around they can't go by themselves don't be afraid of them they can do no evil neither is it in them to do good mm -hmm. like don't put your trust in these things because right after that it this passage is comparing these idols to Christ where it says for as much as there is none like thee O Lord thou art great and their name is great in my hmm. Don't you think? Yeah, I mean, I, I don't, I don't see the, I don't, I don't see the Christmas tree in there. Yeah, so I mean, it's not even relating to winter or evergreens or anything. Yeah, I mean, this one it says they're upright as the palm tree. Maybe it's a palm tree. Yeah. So we, so should we change to a palm tree or no? We should keep <laughs> it the evergreen then. Yeah. The anyway, so safe. so that was kind of where I was like, okay, I don't think again because this is from abc.net mm. and it says i mean that's a pretty reliable source this, this is the point though this is what like lots of people say pagans in europe use branches of evergreen fir trees to decorate their home during winter solstice early romans used evergreens to decorate their temples at, fe at the festival of saturnalia while ancient egyptians used green palm rushes as part of their worship for the god ra and it's like i think it just kind of proves just humans, humans, uh, humans use whatever will resources. Use God's nature yeah. to worship themselves, worship an idol. Yeah. And there's nothing wrong with using those things to glorify the Lord. Yeah, to worship the one true God. Yeah, I can see that. Um, and again, I don't want to be flippant with speaking to paganism stuff because if this is a real conviction with for people, then I want them to be able to like. I, well, it, it is. It is a real conviction. And it, and it was a real conviction to me. This is more just sharing personally what was our thought process to going from not celebrating it to feeling no guilt yeah. and feeling excited at the prospect of celebrating Christmas this year. Yeah, because that this really was our journey. That was the first hurdle was like, is the first question was, is it wrong to celebrate Christmas? Not like, is it our preference to celebrate Christmas? Should we celebrate Christmas? You know, is it unchristian? It's like, is it wrong to celebrate Christmas? And that was the first and probably should be the first question that you try to satisfy um, if you have, you know, a conscience issue with with the Christmas. Yeah. So actually, I have all these like super long passages I'm reading. Do you mind if I read another one? I feel like you can't really go wrong with doing that. <laughs> okay. So this is Romans 14, 4 through 8. And this passage was really encouraging to me. And I hope it's encouraging to you if you feel a conscience conscious beliefs towards not celebrating Christmas, because mm. I think that that's just as valid. And this is, yeah, Romans 14, starting verse four, who are you to pass judgment on the servant of another? It is before his own master that he stands or falls, and he will be upheld for the Lord is able to make him stand. One person esteems one day as better than another, while another esteems all days alike. Each one should be fully convinced in his own mind. The one who observes the day observes it in honor of the Lord. The one who eats, eats in honor of the Lord, since he gives thanks to God, while the one who abstains, abstains in honor of the Lord and gives thanks to God. 
For none of us lives to himself, and none of us dies to himself. For if we live, we live to the Lord, and if we die, we die to the Lord. So then whether we live or whether we die, we are the Lord's. And I think this is, if we don't celebrate Christmas, let it be for the conviction that we want want to honor and glorify the Lord with our actions. And if we celebrate Christmas, let it be to the honor and glory of the Lord. Yeah, I mean, I don't feel like you can say much more than that. Like, I feel like that's really how we should live our life in every area when it, especially when it comes to areas that might be extra biblical, like meaning the Bible doesn't specifically address it. Um, and yet people have a personal conviction on it. Um, or if it's in areas regarding, yeah, our occupation, you know, our, how we're raising our kids, like what, what regards what you're doing or not doing. Um, yeah, I really want my heart to be that is to the glory of the Lord. Um, not for my convenience, not to, be able to, you know, beat somebody in an argument or not to be able to even, not even just doing it for a clear conscience. Like a lot of times you'll do things like, oh, I just want a clear conscience, which is a good motivator, but a far better motivator is I want to do this to the glory of the Lord. Because obviously with that's going to come a clear conscience. Yeah. So this is definitely, this podcast is in no way trying to convince anyone to do something other than what they are already doing in good faith. If they feel that that's that's the right thing to do I think that I've seen a lot of diversion and dissension over this concept division yeah (laughs) diversion diversion (laughs) sometimes you guys we film these (laughs) it's okay we can I think you can do it we film these podcasts at night and all my brain energy is like wiped anyways which yeah. is which is a testament to her motherhood. She gives the best and her first fruits to her family, Aww. to me, and to her children. So grateful for that. You're so good to me. <laughs> anyway, so I've seen a lot of division over this topic, and I love how that verse is like, you know what? Who are we to judge another person? If their heart is to honor and glorify the Lord in their actions, yes, we can have conversations about it, but to condemn someone for that for something that is extra biblical that the yeah. Bible did not say celebrate <clears throat> and did not say don't celebrate um, is just, I think, outside the bounds of what should we should be about as Christians. Yes, and it does, I feel like when you're able to move on from some of those things that might not be as pressing or as, you know, specific or, or as clear in the Bible, it does, like, give you that that uh, more equitable, credibility, credibility and maybe relational equity to address things that are, clear sin in a brother or sister's life. Um, Because if you're kind of like nitpicking on things, things like this, and then there is a clear, you know, shortcoming, then are you going to address that in the same manner? You know, Um, Mm -hmm. it's funny that you talk about the division, because that was actually one of the reasons it was so easy for me to become apathetic towards Christmas, because my dad had um, gone through the, the convictions of celebrating or not celebrating, marrying into your family, where it's a, a conversation about, um, you know, what's the right thing to do for it. And um, and then being around a lot more people that, you know, it was just, we were in that sphere a lot. Um, I view it, I, I viewed it as I feel like a lot of people view like eschatology or like soteriology, where it's like this, like, all this does is bring up arguments. I'm just going to not talk about it with anybody. Um, and so it's funny that it's come up and because I care about like soteriology and I care about eschatology and it makes sense that people care about this. And I don't want to, you know, in any way speak lightly to that nor with anybody's convictions, you know? Yeah. And I, I mean, soteriology and eschatology are obviously like way more important than Christmas. But soteriology for sure. Yeah, (laughs) yeah, definitely that one. Um, But I feel like I was really grateful that Elisha was so gracious, did not make this a point of contention. And I'm also grateful that at this point we have the freedom to do, you know, what we feel is going to serve our family best. And there's a few reasons why we felt like this was going to be a blessing to our family this year. So once we felt like, okay, we truly believe that there's no guilt, no shame, nothing wrong with celebrating this. This is up to what we feel called to as Christians. Then we started looking into, okay, does this bless our family? Yeah. Like, do we want to? (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. So is this a tradition we want to have? Yeah. And so, yeah, the first thing I had to go over was like, can I do this with a clear conscience? And then, um, 
a couple things I, I think I just had personal issues with, which I think are a common thing. And maybe some people don't celebrate it because of this. And that's the materialism, the commercialization of it, what Madison Avenue has done with Santa Claus and gift giving and how it's become and Black Friday and how it's become like this just, I don't know, capitalism on steroids this time of year. You know, it's like the, the ugly head of capitalism shows itself every, every Friday after Thanksgiving. Um, should we say capitalism? That's like a trigger word. Do people well, like capitalism? I'm pro capitalist. I like. I think I'm. So capitalist. I don't know uh, if that's. Yeah. Okay. Cool. So. Um, <laughs> so okay, we'll just throw that in. Yeah, there. we'll just throw that in there too. <laughs> Lash um, you with the bombs tonight. No. Um, and that just like got on my nerve, and then I feel like then church culture would jump onto the same bandwagon and be like, okay, well let's, let's have Santa Claus parades at our church. Let's do because there are some things that like aren't. Yeah. Again. We don't promote Santa, like lying to our kids about Santa, I don't have a clear conscience about. Yeah, you and know? It's, it's not just lying, because there's that aspect. And then also, I think it turns all of Christmas into a fairy tale, because we're talking about these fake Christmas stories with like walking snowmen and Santa Claus that comes down in his sleigh. And then we're mixing that with the true incredible birth of Christ, hmm. the savior of the world. And kids are very black and white, and so this starts to become super confusing. <laughs> I wow. s- I've seen that with Leon. Yeah. We don't talk about Santa Claus, but you know, it's everywhere. As far as we don't talk about it, meaning we don't like, oh, Santa Claus is going to come with presents or whatever. Mm-hmm. And Leon said the other day, he's our four year old, and he said, you know what's crazy is Santa Claus rides on reindeer in the sky, and Jesus is going to come down on a horse with the flaming sword, and trumpets are going to sound, and we're all going to go up to heaven. And he, he was, was like, like combining crazy, the two huh? is like these two guys are just going to be flying around in the sky. Yeah. And I had <laughs> to really clarify like, yeah, one's true and one's a made up story. Yeah. You know, yeah. one Jesus is coming to take us home at some point, however that yeah. looks, whether it's to redeem this earth or take us to a new earth yeah. or I don't Bruce talk Lynn. about eschatology. So it's just, <laughs> We're yeah. talking about capitalism and eschatology <laughs> and all kinds of things to get the tails in a bunch tonight. But the point was, is he was confused just by what he's picked up. And so yes. I don't want to facilitate that. Yeah, more confusion. Yeah. Um, exactly. Because again, even with c- coming to a clear conscience and celebrating Christmas, that doesn't mean we're celebrating everything that people attribute to Christmas no. this time of year. We're not buying, we're, we're not buying into everything. Mm-hmm. We do, we do think it is an awesome time to acknowledge the miraculous virgin birth of Jesus Christ, you know, the savior um, coming to earth. And we want to, yeah, we want to be thoughtful on the aspects of Christmas that we're choosing to celebrate. Yeah. Um, it's, it's funny how even it's been kind of a challenge for me to talk to the kids about Jesus's birth at this time of year, because I do still think that Jesus was born in the spring, <laughs> you know, right. the tax, it, the tax collecting happened and all of that. And so I'm like, okay, Katie, it doesn't matter. We could talk about Jesus's birth at any time of year, you know? Well, that's actually, so once I got over the materialistic part of it, um, I, I, another factor was family. I wanted to feel like we could honor our family in this because w- yeah. we've got the utmost, like literally we hopefully people that have been listening to this podcast for any length of time know how much we admire and look up to your parents, your grandparents, your aunts and your uncles. As far as role models for the Christian faith, mm-hmm. I literally, I, they are our go-to role models. They are our role models for the faith. And I can't think of better role models to have. Um, and we wanted to make sure that we were our own family. This is our decision and that we're making. We didn't want to cast any, you know, shade on them in any way. Um, or, or, or hopefully not disappoint them, you know? And also we haven't had the time or just the ability at this point to go around and have conversations with everyone. With every single person. Yeah. Yeah. It's just, so some people will probably hear on this podcast or whatever, and we have a very supportive family. I don't think anyone's going to have an issue with us celebrating Christmas. They're going to be like, okay, well, we're going to keep doing what we're doing. Elisha and Katie clearly love the Lord as well. And they feel differently about this, Yeah, but we want to be sensitive to different flavors that have different convictions. Definitely. Um, So I wanted that. But you mentioned something, and I want to get to it quickly before this episode gets crazy long. I then started looking at the pros. I was like, okay, so these are things that have been hurdles for me. You know, the the paganism, the materialism, kind of the commercialization of it, and then family, wanting to honor and respect them. Um, Are there blessings in this? And 
Yes, big time. For, I mean, I think that there are big time blessings in it that we have been experiencing as of late, and I hope we continue to experience. And if they, it's at the point where if they're not blessings to us, or if Christmas becomes more of a burden, or if there's a new revelation regarding something that perks our conscience, like we said last year, we reserve the right to change our stance on this yes, um, and do and do another, you know, 180 and be like, no, this is not right for us, you know, to celebrate this. Um, but right now, the whole like some some advent calendars that you can find out there, those are so edifying, I think. Having this season to really dwell on the significance of Christ becoming, God becoming human flesh and why it needed to come through, you know, the virgin birth of Mary so that the sinful seed of Adam was not in him at all. You know, he was fully man, yet fully God. He was fully man without being tainted by the sin of man. I mean, it's so miraculous the way that God did that so that he could truly be perfect, the perfect, the new and perfect Adam, starting from the time he's conceived in the womb, not tainted with sin. It's so, so amazing. And to really to see, and to see how that is such an integral part of the gospel in order for him to be the perfect lamb that he went to be, this had to happen. And it's so fun to dwell on that. Yeah, I think one of the big reasons we decided to do this for our family, as you guys know, we're really big on setting up systems that so that we don't have to recreate the wheel every time. And we were realizing, wow, this is a really incredible opportunity to have some kind of guideline or structure for teaching our kids about the gospel, not just Jesus coming to earth, but the creation all the way through him dying on the cross yeah. for our sins to him saving us yeah eternally yeah, yeah exactly and rising like from back. the dead and his return yeah, yeah. And reigning. yeah like what a cool opportunity and so initially we just started out thinking okay we're gonna do like the advent calendar so i got a book where we're reading to the kids each day that tells the creation story through joseph through abraham mm-hmm. through i know i'm jumping all over this isn't chronological <laughs> chronological but it it tells the gospel through all these different stories ending with the birth of Christ. Hmm. And I just think that's a really awesome structure for me to have that accountability to teach our kids every day. And I really hope it starts a habit of finding structure throughout the rest of the year and that it isn't this one-time thing. But that was something I was really looking forward to. And yes. I am looking forward to right now. Yeah. And again, I have I think that there's I go through seasons where... I feel like God blesses me with just this like infrastructure of relationships and family that really keep me edified in my faith where we can be at a random coffee shop on Thursday and feel so built up in our faith. Um, and, and, and maybe going to church every Sunday or celebrating some of the more historical church like holidays have seemed less significant to us, but we're in a season now where I just am so grateful for a lot of the church history. Is it, are they mandated things to do in the Bible? No, the, the Advent calendars are not prescribed in the Bible by any means. You know, uh, the the holiday season, so many things that as church history is not prescribed in the Bible, but I've found it to be of great benefit to me because it it does what Paul told us to do, or Peter, I think, bring this up in remembrance because we're prone to forget. We're prone to forget these things. So if you can have kind of like these checkpoints, even if they're man-made checkpoints, you know, go to church every Sunday, you know, so get an advent calendar in your house, you know, partake. This is the, this is my blood. This is my part. Do communion, you know, with the brothers and sisters in the Lord. Uh, these checkpoints are like, okay, did the, does the Bible say I have to do this once a week? Does it say we have to do this once a year? It doesn't, it doesn't tell us we have to do that, but can it be really helpful? I, in the, this season in my life and in our life, it has been so helpful to have some of those structures it's been so helpful for our faith. Yeah. I think of them kind of like the stones, which God did say multiple times to the Israelites. Okay. I did this great thing here, build a pile of stones as a marker so that when your kids walk by and they're like, Hey, what's that big pile of stones doing there? You can tell about the goodness of the Lord. And I, Elisha and I are just really craving those times like that, where we can talk to our children because something pricks our remembrance Hmm. and it leads us to continued discussion and teaching them because it's so easy to get caught up in other things that yeah. are taking our attention or our checkpoints all day long, you know, yeah. email and jobs and texts. And there's just so many things that we're attached to. And we want to build as many 
things into our life, not out of a spirit of, again, this is in freedom of Christ, just because it blesses us yes. and it encourages us us in our walk with the Lord, not because God demands it in any stretch. Exactly. And should we be teaching our children and teaching ourselves about God becoming man and coming to earth and be every day, all year, all year round? Yeah, that's a great thing. We should do that. But whether we do it or not, it's nice to have these checkpoints. Just like, should we, you know, should we have feel close to the Lord and like walk with him and do our devotionals every day, not just on Sunday? Of course, that's that's absolutely. But it is nice to like have these like almost backups to be like, oh man, that's great. Cause I, we can genuinely say, what is it? December. Like we haven't done like a hard deep dive into the birth of Jesus this year Yeah, with our kids, yeah. you know? And so, well, great. We get to do that now. I well, mean, we could have done it. We could have done it anytime, but what I'm saying we're reminded to do it here um, at this, at this time of year. Yeah. You say backups, but I think it can even be a catalyst yeah. to a lot more study. Yes. Yes. And it, and, it, and it can further that personal and vibrant and spirit fed walk that is day in and day out. And when you sit down to eat, when you rise up to walk and it's a, it's your everyday life. We certainly desire that. And I think God desires that for us as his children to live, to eat and drink and live and have our being in him. Um, regardless of what we're doing whether it's in the profession or what time of year it is. Um, so I, I certainly think that that's what God desires of us and that we can walk in that. And I think that these can be catalysts to do that. Yeah. So anyways, that's kind of where this past year has taken us. There's been a lot of prayer behind this and a lot of research. And I feel like the Lord's just really changed our hearts towards this subject. And mm. we're really excited to embrace this month and all that we've kind of set up to be able to focus on Christ and mm. teach our kids about the gospel in a deeper way from a different angle than what we've been teaching them the rest of the year. And hopefully you're just encouraged, regardless of where you are on this whole Christmas issue, um, I just, I hope you'll be encouraged to continue doing, or how do I say this? Like, I just want I just want Christians to feel confident and joyful celebrating the Lord in whatever capacity that means to them. If that yeah. means, you know, not going along with any of the traditional stuff, or if that means fully embracing it, I just think that there we have so much freedom in Christ over this issue. And so, so just to appreciate that freedom and be thankful for that gift of salvation. Yes, absolutely. All right. Well, let's wrap this thing up. All right. We will see you guys next Tuesday. All right. <laughs> Good job, Katie. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye. -bye. Bye.